What's up everyone? Today we're going to be discussing the reality of hair loss for men in the world today. I know it's not the most comfortable topic, but it is one that needs to be discussed with an honest and open reaction because it is something that is incredibly common and two thirds of men will start experiencing some degree of hair loss by the age of 35 in America today. My name is Spencer Gilmore. I am the creator and founder of Hair Rescue. It is a topical supplement designed to prevent hair loss and encourage new hair growth. My company has been around for about four years now and we have sold over 10,000 men around the world. So I have a little bit of Knowledge on this topic, but most of this is just going to be discussing my own personal experience and what some treatments out there are available today and the reality of the situation because, you know, it's an uncomfortable topic that not everyone wants to discuss, but here we are. I'm 27 years old currently, and I've been dealing with hair loss for several years now. It pretty much started when I was in college around the age of 2021. 20, it runs in my family, so I knew that genetic hair loss is definitely something that I could be predisposed to, and that is a really good indicator if you will start to suffer from hair loss in your life, if someone in your family has suffered from hair loss, or you're in your distant family, and it will usually start to happen between the ages of 25 and 35, and for some even earlier. I know it's about 21% of men in the world start suffering from hair loss under the age of 25, some as early as like 16, depending on when you went through puberty and how sensitive you are to it. First, I really wanna discuss, you know, the basic of the hair life cycle and the hair growth cycle. The hair grows in cycles. It has the growth phase, antigen, the transition phase, catagen, and the resting phase, telogen. In male pattern baldness, these cycles start getting shorter and shorter, and what's happening is the process called follicular miniaturization. Essentially, your hair follicles are shrinking, producing thinner, shorter hairs, and these hairs become less pigmented until they eventually stop producing hair altogether. The primary cause of this is of course genetics. Male pattern baldness aka androgenic alopecia is largely inherited in your father, grandfather, and uncle and either side of your family experience balding there's a higher chance that you will too. But the main culprit of hair loss and where you get the genetic from and if it's going to be affecting you is a hormone called DHT, dihydrotestosterone. It's derived from testosterone and in men that are genetically predisposed to hair loss, this causes your hair follicles to shrink. But more testosterone doesn't necessarily mean more hair loss. This is kind of where your genetic sensitivity comes to play with DHT. So when someone says they have genetic hair loss, it really just means that genetically their hair is going to be sensitive to DHT in the body. And DHT is a critical hormone that you keep in balance with your testosterone and estrogen in your body and it is naturally converted in the body from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, a more potent androgen form, via a enzyme in the body called 5-alpha reductase, and there's type 1 and type 2, and we'll get into that more here in a minute. But this is what they say when you know, you're genetically gonna lose your hair. It's because if you're not that sensitive to it, your hair follicles just seem to be not that androgen receptor sensitive, you won't really have any hair loss. So that's why you'll see men who are, you know, maybe in their 40s and 50s and just have a perfect hairline. Ronald Reagan is an excellent example of this. One of our presidents, he just had a Norwood Zero. No hair loss no recession, nothing. Genetically, he was blessed, and that's a very small set of the population, maybe 10 to 15%. For most men, hair loss is gonna begin in their early to late teens, but typically can become noticeable in their mid-20s and early 30s, and I mentioned about 25% of men are predisposed to that baldness process to begin about the age of 21 or younger. Doctors use what's called the Norwood scale to classify male pattern baldness. It ranges from one minimal recession to seven being extensive baldness with only a horseshoe of hair remaining. You know, left, you have that really, the top of the scalp is basically completely bald, and they just have hair loss in the sides, and that's also DHT-related hair loss. Hair loss typically follows this predictable pattern, starting with a receding hairline, uh, essentially at the temples, creating that M shape that most people have, definitely something that I have, probably a Norwood too. Or it begins with a thinning at the crown, which is the top of the head, and sometimes it happens at the same time. The crown starts thinning, to where you have less hair on the top of your head, and it starts going at the temples until they eventually meet. In my own personal case, I mentioned I started suffering from hair loss when I was about 20, 21, and I didn't know initially that it was actually like androgenic alopecia because I just thought that it, maybe I was shedding, but it was a little bit more than normal because remember, you do lose about 50 to 100 hairs a day and that's super natural. That's just your hair cycles falling out because the average head of hair has about 100,000 hairs. And that's why you can lose 20, 30,000 hairs without seeing a ton of difference. You can go from that Norwood 1 to a Norwood 2, even creeping up to a Norwood 3, and you might not even see a ton of hair loss, but it's been thinning a lot. And by the time you get to 50% density, that's when it's like, it's tough to come back from. So here's some early warning signs that you might be suffering from hair loss that's actually genetic related hair loss and not just maybe something that's coming up with like high cortisol, look bad sleep, you know, high stress and poor diet situation that could be fixed with things like that, but it's actually genetic hair loss. You have excessive hair in the shower drain or on your pillow, a widening part starts happening in your head, uh, noticeable thinning at the crown, a receding hairline, especially at the temples. Your scalp becomes more visible under 
bright lights, more of your forehead starts showing compared to, you know, maybe a few years ago. So it's always good to you know, start measuring and see where it is and if it's getting worse. This is also something that's really common when you're 35 and under because hair loss is going to usually affect you before the age of 35, especially if it is genetic androgenic alopecia, male pattern baldness. If it is not that, it's why you don't always see men who are like 40 to 50 lose a ton of hair. It's usually starts happening when you're younger and this can be how genetically sensitive you are to DHT in your body. And that's why you don't see it. If you are 23 years old and you start losing a lot of hair, unfortunately the cards you were dealt were genetic hair loss. But if you make it to the age of 35 with really no excessive hair loss and your hairline hasn't changed, we all have friends out there that just have a perfect hairline, they're probably not going to magically start balding at the age of 38, 40. They just didn't, they don't have it. So if you start suffering from hair loss before the age of 35 and it seems to be androgenic alopecia, you want to start doing something as soon as possible because starting treatment is paramount for keeping the hair that you currently have because keeping the hair that you have is a lot easier and much more practical than trying to regain a bunch of hair. And if you need to regain a bunch of hair, you're probably going to have to have an extensive routine, be genetically a hyper responder to a lot of treatments out there, and you may even need a hair transplant. Let's talk about what actually works based on scientific evidence. The first and only FDA approved treatments that are currently available in the United States are finasteride, AKA Propecia, which is the oral treatment. This prescription medication blocks the conversion of dihydrotestosterone, addressing the root cause of male pattern baldness. It can reduce DHT levels in the body by about 70%. Study shows it's effective for about 85% of men who take this drug in preventing further hair loss and seeing some regrowth. However, it does come with some potential side effects like reduced libido for a small percentage of users, I would say that's about that 15% or less. Now that degree of how bad it is, whether it's manageable, not that noticeable versus they are completely impotent. And that does happen. It's rare, but it, it does happen. And so it's a little bit scary. So you definitely want to start small with things like finasteride. Side note to that, there are hundreds of compound pharmacies out there now that sell topical finasteride and topical dutasteride. Dutasteride is a stronger version of finasteride. One, dutasteride is not FDA approved. And two, taking these drugs, applying them topical is not FDA approved for hair loss. Even though it is the same drug and it kind of still has the same mechanism of action, it has not been approved topically for FDA use. It has only been approved orally. Just, just so, you know, when all these companies say FDA approved ingredients, it's technically a little bit of stretching the truth. Minoxidil, AKA Rogaine, is one of the most popular brands out there. This is a topical treatment that improves blood flow to the scalp and prolongs the growth phase of the hair follicles. It's available over the counter in various strengths and about 60% of men who use this see moderate regrowth and requires consistent twice daily use. It's because your scalp and they wanna see a saturation of about 70% and due to its half-life, if you're only taking it once a day, it could be under that and underperform the results that you could get when you're applying it twice a day. I like the topical form and you can even get it really, really cheap at Costco. And it's, you know, like, $20 for a six month supply using it twice a day. So I think minoxidil is great, but it is something that isn't gonna be a complete game changer when it comes to preventing further hair loss. It will help you grow more hair, but it doesn't address the root cause of why you're losing hair, which is usually that dihydrotestosterone. Low level laser therapy, one thing that I really love, devices like laser caps and combs stimulate hair follicles and can improve hair density. They're expensive, but they really have minimal to no side effect profile. So if you're willing to fork up you know, $800 for one of these caps, I think they're great. I use one 15 to 30 minutes every single day and I can say it definitely has helped my hair, but I know they are a little bit expensive, but if you buy one, you probably will never need to buy another one again. And it's one of the best places to start first because it really doesn't have any side effects and only is gonna have benefits. Other options include Kinaconazole based shampoos. Originally an anti-dandruff shampoo, Kinaconazole has, has shown some anti-androgen effects, properties. These may help hair loss, but you need to use it and put it on your scalp for at least five minutes. So when you're taking a shower, immediately put it on, Try to let it sit for five plus minutes and then wash it out. Don't need to use it every day. Three to four times a week is plenty. Microneedling is fantastic. Creates tiny injuries in the scalp, stimulates growth factors, and increases absorption of other topical treatments. You only need to use this once a week, sometimes twice a week if you've been using it for a while, but definitely a great way to improve blood flow similar to a low level laser therapy cap. I mean, this has been shown to be very helpful and effective. You just don't want to overdo it because then it can kind of have an adverse effect. Platemo rich plasma, PRP injection. This involves injecting your own blood plasma into your scalp to stimulate hair growth. Once again, this is a great, almost side effect for option for increasing hair growth, increasing properties to make the scalp more conducive environment for hair growth, but is expensive. 
I mean, these treatments are like $1,500 a pop. So not something that you're probably going to be doing often unless you can afford it. Supplements, these supplements include biotin, salt palmetto, pumpkin seed oil, and others may help some people. Evidence, a lot of this stuff is limited, but these are great places to start if you wanna try things that have no real side effect profile and can only offer a benefit. A lot of things like salt palmetto, pumpkin seed oil, rice water, rosemary oil, all these things are gonna add an extra layer of benefit and maybe give you an extra five to 10% hair increase but it's not going to make or break your hair loss probably. And there are more advanced surgical options, which include hair transplants, as well as scalp micro pigmentations, essentially a scalp tattoo that creates the appearance of closely shaved head. And on top of this, you also have topical anti-androgens like RU5841 and pyrolutamide. Pyrolutamide is actually undergoing quite extensive clinical trials, and I believe it has passed phase one, two, and three clinical trials. They're, of course, did this all in China, so we're not sure if it will ever get FTA approved, but it has been giving some promising results. It has been shown to be not quite as strong as RU5841, but it is getting further along in its clinical trials, which is really promising. And I'd be hoping that that comes out soon, but I don't have any real evidence to suggest that it's going to be approved really soon. I do like RU5841 over pyrolutamide, but there are people who really fear monger it. And I mean, the ones who get the worst side effects are always going to scream the loudest. Same thing with finasteride for you know, 85% of men who take finasteride, it seems to work really well with minimal to no side effects whatsoever. And I would say it's about the same thing for RU58841. 85% of men are probably no side effects whatsoever. And it's maybe that 10 to 15% of people that could experience some degree of side effects and they stop using it. And usually all side effects go away. Same thing with finasteride. Now for my own personal regimen, remember, I'm sharing my experience. This isn't something you need to do, not medical advice. And of course, consult with your dermatologist and or doctor if you are looking to start any of these treatments, but this is what I've been doing. And I have tried just about every treatment on the market other than PRP injections and getting a hair transplant because one, I haven't gone that far yet. And two, I don't need a hair transplant. I have tried finasteride, topical and oral. Oral, I definitely got a lower libido. Now it wasn't debilitating, but I noticed a difference and I didn't like it. So I stopped taking it. And I've tried a few times of taking real low dose finasteride, but um, I didn't love it. So I've stopped taking it. I did think I might implement a really low dose topical finasteride solution here and just see what happens with it. I've been a big fan of minoxidil my entire life. I've been using minoxidil once a day, sometimes twice a day, but pretty much just once a day from Costco. And uh, Kinaconazole based shampoos, I use this two to three times weekly, uh, letting it sit on my scalp for at least five minutes before rinsing it out. Try to micro needle at about 1.5 millimeter length once a week. I also use a low level laser therapy cap, like I mentioned, almost every single day. You don't have to use it every single day. They recommend less than that, but I'm just like, I'll use it every day. I take some multivitamins and then I spray my scalp with this rosemary oil and rice water thing. And I also use one of my own products as well, which is the advanced hair growth oil has a ton of really great ingredients in it. I cycle on and off using the RU5841 that I have from Hair Rescue, just because I don't know, I, I think it helps to cycle off some of these things just here and there because it will decrease in efficacy if you've been using it for a decade. And I haven't noticed any side effects from it yet. I try to get it from a legit source and that's what we sell to our customers, but with third-party lab tested things and on the website. So if you're looking for that, that's where it is. But once again, that's something that I take and I cycle on and off of it. And those other things like minoxidil, ketoconazole, microneedling, the scalp, oil, and the low-level laser therapy caps. I have been consistent with that and never stopped it. You can see my hairline is basically like a Norwood 2, Norwood 1. I do have some receding hair, but I have a lot of little baby hairs that have been coming back in recently. It's, I think it's because I've been improving on my microneedling and using the cap again. I hadn't had a laser cap and I bought one again like six months ago and I've been using it. I really think they make a difference. And with some of the uh, clinical trials on it, they did seem to be pretty efficacious for growing back hair. One of the psychological impacts of hair loss, I would say, is that that often gets overlooked is that studies show that hair loss can significantly affect your self-esteem and your confidence and mental health as a man. And apparently women also prefer to have men with good hair than not good hair. And it also makes you look younger in my opinion. You see those people who go in and get the uh, toupees that they glue onto your head and it's a night and day difference. The guy looks like he goes from being 45 years old and all of a sudden he's 28 again when he gets his hair done. So it's definitely something that makes a difference. I just want to be honest about my own experience here with noticing it when I was 20 and then doing something about it and now being 27. My dad has had two hair, three hair transplants in his entire life. And I had a couple of my cousins who were like 27, 28 when I was 16 and I went to their weddings and they were bald. 
I mean like completely bald. And so I knew that it ran in the family and I was definitely likely to get it. I started noticing it then. I knew that I needed to do something about it. So if you're struggling with the emotional aspects of hair loss, know that you're, you're not alone. Millions of men are going through these same exact thing as you are and it shouldn't be so taboo to discuss it. Whether you choose to treat it or not, shave it all off. It's your choice completely or do anything in between. My decision is it's personal and there's no real wrong choice to it, but acting as soon as you start noticing that it's actually genetic alopecia and you can go to your dermatologist or your doctor and they can actually diagnose it for you, you know, your choice. Final takeaways that I think are good from this video as well. Earlier, the better, like I mentioned. Consistency is key. All of these treatments, if you do not keep them with a the saturation in your body, whether it comes to finasteride, whether it comes to minoxidil, whether it comes to these low-level laser therapies and the shampoos, or RU5841, if you don't use them, like you're, you're you use them once or twice a week because you forget, you're not gonna get the results you want and you're just not gonna regrow hair. You might be able to save off a little bit of hair loss, but consistency is key with these treatments. And remember, hair loss is incredibly common and doesn't define your worth or attractiveness and who you are. I know that a lot of people make it seem like it's such a big deal, but sure, just shave it. Maybe you look like Jason Statham or The Rock and you are a handsome bald man. I'd love to hear your experiences with hair loss in the comments below. What treatments have worked for you? What your current stack is? If you have the same stack as me or are there's any weird treatments out there that have worked well for you? If you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching and like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. it means a lot for the algorithm and uh, we'll be back with more soon.